And that is the word I'm going to preach. My soul bless the Lord. Me crashira erazi ma mi muadina shauni de kron kron me crashira erazi oh ma wurenfi. Can we take it again? My soul bless the Lord. Yes. to hear your word and we are here to follow your word and we are here to be the doers of your word and we can't do all this by our strength we still count on your grace and mercies and still request your help to enable us and able us to be the doers of your word we believe since we've requested and have asked this, is done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be seated. Put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. My message or our message this morning is about what shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? You know, this is David talking here. The greatest king ever live on planet Earth. That God was with him and throughout God confirmed through signs and wonders with evidence that this is a king I erected and I stayed with him and I ended with him. That is King David of once upon a time, Israel. The Bible says before his kingship or before he ascended on the throne, he was the one that was least respected and least known and least among his seven brothers of which he was the eighth one. The Bible says... Mercies of God, he ascended on the throne because of the anointing and because the Lord himself have elected him. The Bible says he went through fire, he went through waters, he went through all things that one can happen to say about. And he saw death and he saw life. And through them all, the Bible says the Lord delivered him. The Bible says, in all his ways, it came to a point where there was no hope. Some ways there was hope. Some ways he was rejected, rejected by men. But then God was with him. So when it came to a time, Bible says, David said to himself, I have seen God who has delivered me from evil. 
I have seen God who have saved me in time of death. I have seen God who has prospered me so much. I have seen God who has confirmed with signs and evidence that he is with me. And then the Bible says this is what he said. Can we turn to the book of Psalms 16, excuse me, 116, verses 12. Psalms 116, 12. And we can read what David says all together. Go. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? Can we say it once again and even this time more powerful? What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? David said, just like I just paraphrased before reading, all the benefits, think about benefits. That means benefits are like profits. Are you getting me? That means after even the life God gave to me, after even making me a king, initially I was nothing, but he made me somebody and then took care of me, made sure that anything that comes in my way that would take even my life away, I was protected. So, David, if you are sensible enough, what do you also do for the Lord? And it is a question that we all have to answer. I'm not talking about only David because I don't think this issue relates with only David. It doesn't relate with only David. It relates with almost every one of us sitting here. Everyone, and let me take even the almost out. Every one of us here, this word relates to us in one way or the other. The Lord has helped us. The Lord has delivered us. The Lord has saved us. The Lord has shown his mercies, his compassion towards us. Now, even this word goes for our nation, America. And much more also, it goes for what happened in Las Vegas just about three weeks ago. I was listening to the news and uh, especially the sheriffs, all the reports they were giving, there was a gap between. And the gaps has become so debatable. One of the gaps was that they don't know why the guy did that. And another gap also is that they don't know why the guy even sees shooting. Because all circumstances leads to that if he started this shooting with the number of bullets and all he was having at his side and with the machine gun that he said automatically that by a place will just spray the bullets and then all of a sudden they can't tell how he stopped and they can't tell how he died even though they attribute that he killed himself but that gap has not been answered that how he decided that, let me stop the shooting. And how he was gunned down. I will probably fill the gap. I will say that somewhere in between. Because let me get back to this again. The cloud was so compacted that when bullets are going, the bullets doesn't have to be directed where to go. Because anywhere at all any of the bullets falls can get somebody to kill. But then, why all of a sudden he stopped the firing and he was gunned down? I believe God, by his wisdom and intervention, stopped this. I believe if they don't have an answer, I believe God did. 
God stopped it somewhere. That's why probably they could not have an answer to that because it could be more spiritual than physical. Because if this had continued until the time they got into his room, this would have been over disastrous. So God helped there. It relates with what David is saying. And this also goes to the family and to all of us in the United States of America. Uh, me, this time, if you agree with me, breaking news is no more breaking news. For some time now, uh, this uh, family, even, excuse me, Papa Obama's time, we were saying breaking news, not knowing they were uh, commandees. These days, breaking news, when you see, are like, let it flow. Everything is a stream. Whatever we are experiencing, fire is fire, wild, and a stream. The water coming are in the streams. Flood, hurricane, those days when the hurricane comes, at least they can name him. But this time, before they name him, another one is coming with another name. So we don't know which one brought forth first and which one is the last. Taking nations. But then, in these lines, we still have life. And even if you be honest with me, and we can go by our projections, our economy is rather doing better. Things are still going on. Some people thought, etc. and etc. But God is still merciful to us. So if we are normal beings that by his grace reasons and knows the doings of God, then it gives us a tab not to just push this on only David to acknowledge what God has done for him. It tells you and I to ask ourselves that with all what God has done, what can we also render unto him? The benefits I'm saying here, if I relate it to you, it means that if God will do anything great by his grace and mercies, that is what he has brought you to this country. Some are somewhere, some are in some troubles, some are going through some lives of hurricanes and the rest. And they don't see even their way forward. But you, you, you have life, you have peace, you have your family. Yeah, yes, yesterday, for instance, I went to a program, FM program, which I was invited to help to adore. And after I came home, my whole family, they sat so somewhere 12 o'clock, I told them I'm going to have my bed. I can't sit by you. That's why you see big games. I don't know who came first or who went last. And I was saying to myself, what else in this world can one enjoy? And what else benefit is one looking for again? If nothing at all, I was sleeping. I hear shoutings and smilings. Uh, I mean, joy disturbing me. You see, it wasn't a fight. It wasn't litigation. It wasn't one against the other. They were playing their games. They were sharing their jewels. They were enjoying themselves. They were looking for who is in the higher class. That's one of their games. You see, it's a benefit to me that to tell and ask myself, God, if you have given me all this peace of mind, only to live and enjoy my life, it's a benefit. I can't go and argue. Excuse me, uh, I, I don't tell people's issue, but sometimes some of them work for lessons for us to appreciate what God is doing in our lives. I've got about three families in this country, a position of a level that you won't believe. Some called me and within the five minutes could not even keep 
shut their mouths, and I did not know how to even switch off the phone or to leave the phone on. A whole adult, a whole person of position, a dignified people, weeping on phone, and could not even put themselves together and let alone tell you the story. Some being their children, some being their family. Excuse me, if you have got a wife here and they break and you see her feet and she is for you alone, I will call it also a benefit. Trust me, I hear things. This my little Chinese eyes, things that they see. Please, there are so much to talk about them tangibly in public. But if you come here, because I'm emphasizing on this to make a point that some of you think that is some of you think that it's only when your business is flourishing, that's why God is with you. Hey, do you know I know billionaires? Not just those checks you think about from your work. Billionaires, they don't have a, a, a mouth to talk about their zeros of blessings. And trust me, they wish probably they would have been sitting here across their legs like you have here. They are in trouble. Everything, if you talk about now these days, is falling out of our hands. And so it was in the time of David. Look, talk about the Philistines. Talk about the, the, the Jebusites. When he became a king, that time Jerusalem was under the control of the Jebusites. The Jebusites were the anarchists, the giants. And upon it, they were on the hill that they have fortified with war. A strong war, the one better than our president had in mind. But the Bible says, they said to themselves, if David will conquer anywhere, not we the Jebusites, we will deal with him. Then God spoke to David, I want you to take Jerusalem to be my city. Look at the challenge. Have you got any challenge such like this? The Bible says David had no clue as how he would take Jerusalem to be his city. That is why up to now it's called a city of God. The Bible says from nowhere God revealed to David and revealed to his strong men, his armed commanders. He says there is a stream that passes through underground that surprised them water in Jerusalem used to be the controlling territory of the Jebusites. He says, as the streams run through, tonight you and your forces join the stream and stream into the city. And as I blow the, tr I blow the trumpet, go on them and attack them. They never thought that anybody can enter into the city. David and his people got into the city, destroyed them, won the battle, and up to now, it has named after the city of David, the city of God, Jerusalem, where the whole world sees to as the beginning and the end of the peace and destruction of earth. Listen to me. What are you challenging with? What at all is confronting you in life? And I have much and many to talk about David. So it makes sense for him to say, at long last, what will I render to this God who has been there with me, both in thick and thin? The Bible says it got to a time this was a great warrior. He faced bullets. He faced javelins. He faced all kinds of things. You all the time only know the story of Goliath. 
But if you study Bible, the life of David and what the guy, the man, the king went through, it tells that Goliath's we read all the time was the least. I'm telling you today. Because it is Goliath tougher than lion. And even if he hadn't met the time that he haven't met Goliath, he has already killed lion. The Bible puts it lions. That means frequently they came after his sheep and he goes after them. This is such a bold young man. The Bible says once upon a time he was saying that when the wolf come and take any of my sheep, as for them, I, they, it gets to extend that they grab my sheep with their teeth and I will hold their jaw. Their jaw, is that? Their jaw. And open the jaw and break the jaw and take my sheep up and throw them away. So as for the wolf, he was throwing them like a basketball. Just imagine. So are the teeth not even scratching him? Were the lions afraid of him? Were the enemies afraid of him? The Bible says he did not even put a proper uh, army together. They were what we call castaways, vangabos, and he brought them together and he became a vang chief of vangabos. <laughs> and he said, these are my army. And yet in economy, in the, uh, economy, in fighting, in warfare, and whatever the world will come up to now, he came on top of all walls. So David saw one thing. It wasn't by my means. It wasn't by how intelligent and powerful I was. The Bible doesn't describe David as a giant. He could be a man of a media structure. But look at how powerful. The other kings stayed aside and away when their troops are gone to war. But this is a king, he leads the war himself. Oh my goodness. He wasn't just a detector that go and fight and win battles for him. He goes to the war himself. The only one time David ignored his responsibility and did not go to war and Abraham, he said, go and war and bring the report. That was the time he saw Bathsheba. So sometimes when you ignore your responsibility, you invite trouble. The Bible says, uh, Mr. Dodo, this time he told them, go to the war. I'm tired. Let me take some rest. And after the king has gone, then he said, let me walk through my kingdom palace and walk and stroll and have a look. And then while she was walking, he saw his own army commander that was seriously at battle's wife, taking her bath, not knowing bath. He said, no, this one, I'm resting, let me go for her. That was the time he had the trouble. So if God commits things to your hands, be diligent at it. Be diligent at them. Take your responsibility seriously. You know, sometimes I look at myself and I say, God, where are the strength I do all this? And I got to know that when God puts you in a position, he gives you a provision to meet the necessity of the responsibility. <laughs> because I say to the glory of God, I never feel like today I am weak. I get all the time greener and energizing and full push on. I always feel some kind of inner motivation doing what God says you must do. Because I always feel within me that one of these days, tomorrow, today, anyhow, something will break forth and there will be a fulfillment. That's what it is about. So, if I stand here, I started with many. Some of my mates, even in the ministry, when you see them, they are like they brought me forth. 
Wamuna wo me ankasa. Some of them are old men. Some of them, when I see the abie, I don't know if it is tradition. But I see myself and I like myself and I cherish how God has made me. So if all this and to the betterment of let me share with you how God assists me to pay my bills. It is amazing and wonderful. I'm not despising you. I'm not disrespecting and not appreciating what you do. But let me tell you, let all of us put ourselves aside. What God is doing here and doing especially in my life and the helps he is giving, I don't want to give that credit to any human being because it beats my imagination. It beats my understanding. It beats things that I can fathom with. And so, at the bottom line, when they come, like people been asking me anywhere I go, pastor said, tell us how you did it. Tell us how you did it. For uh, recently now, about two months now, to the glory of God, almost all the pastors in the region and in the state and everywhere, because they come to me, pastor, show us how you bought this. Pastor, show us how we can own property. And then of late, I said, when they come, then I said, I don't want to have any gray hair. Let me post them to some of the people in the church and let them be responsible for that. So I've ceased talking about one. I said, oh, it is my real estate department that handles this. Go to them. They will help you. They will tell you how. But let me be honest to you. I don't know the how. I don't know the how. But I can tell you the how. Who caused the how? That is the God David talks about, Maggie. That is the God David talked about. You know, recently I went with one of my daughters. You know, I have church things that I do and I have outside church things that I do. That a very prominent woman walked to me in the office. She has permitted me to share this. That's why I'm sharing. And then when she walked to me in the office and narrated her story, how oh, it was a story that as I look at her face weeping, I have to control myself. Otherwise, Sophie will weep. Complainer will weep. Who will encourage the other? So I just have to hold myself up. And so I said, okay, come tomorrow. We will together go and face this battle. To and to a stand ended up being a lawyer's office. Then the lawyer told us in our face, Pastor, as for this one, it's not Pastor Tino. It is the loss of the nation. Let the woman go and find a man. And let her find a man who is an American. And let the woman convince the man that he will marry her. Listen very well. Sometimes if you want to follow the wisdom of this world, you will walk with your head. That is why the message of the kingdom is stupid to the sense of the world. Because we always contradict with their wisdom. He said, let the woman convince the man that he, uh, he will marry her. And if they get all this, let them put it together and let you people come. The law will back the issue she has got and there will be way out. Then he turned and asked the woman, is that understood? And then the woman turned back to come and look at my face. And I said in my head, she's talking to you. She's talking to me. I've already got my wife. And I saw the woman had no answer. So I turned to the lawyer. I said, lawyer, I haven't heard the story where a woman will go and look for a wife, a, a husband. Do they do advertisement in this? The lawyer said, oh, this can be possible. It has happened someone came and that is the formula we use. I said, lawyer, ask for this one. I don't have a clue about it. But I have a faith that 
it can be possible. But the possibility, she won't go out for. But if it is her due time, the man will come. Can I tell you there is a miracle? Then believe something has happened. Look. So, when even we follow people and God do not disgrace them, when issues are beyond our human comprehension, are things we can't add up, and we carry them before the Lord. You see, after God did one miracle, then I said to myself, I will encourage all my church members not to trust in men, but to trust in God. You see, and after, after I ministered that message, then I went home, then the message ministered to me. And do you know how the message ministered to me? Pastor, you told the members to trust in God. Have you ever seen that God coming down to come and help people? Whatever God does, we use human beings. And I was getting to believe that, then have I not said it right? Then Holy Spirit told me, they can say it right, but Holy Spirit is always super right. I still want to emphasize on that. If you are sitting here, Mary, hear me right. I'm your husband. I know you have no one aside me. But thank God for me, but don't trust me. Put your trust in Jesus. Listen, a friend of this world can let you down. All things can happen. Let me talk about, I don't know how to swim. But when we are in room together and that hurricane is coming, I will think of my life. But Jesus will think of us all. So when you see this Jesus, Kwesi, when you see his works, and even how he has brought us, I, I met with a couple of financiers. Let me tell you, I never invited them twice with their car. They ran here. They took me through tour. They gave me options. How, if you need help, help can be founded. Then they asked me a simple question. When you own this property, how many were you? Because they wanted some numbers. I said, we were 15. They look at me. They said, do you mean it? I said, yes, we were 15. And I have to use wisdom to say that that 15, we took decision together. But let me tell you, even that 15, I was alone. And even I was alone, I ran away and left God. Because I never believed this thing, God, it makes sense. I never believed, God, this thing, you will stand with me. I was talking God, but in my head, I said, this is impossible. And God said, it is possible. So when I tell you to trust God, I know what I'm talking about. If Mr. C will come, and if God can turn around the heart of Pharaoh to subject him, Mr. C is simple in God's hands to turn him around. God can direct grace to abound for you. And so I'm sensing that these are the things that David saw. And he said, if God, out of all kings on earth, have isolated me, have taken me out, and have made me special, ooh, what shall I render to this God? Unless maybe as I'm talking, as for you, praise God. You come from good family. You come from good job and etc. You go to good church, and I hope it's not here, because this is not so good that we can be all by good ourselves, that without the hand of God to be at this far. Maybe you have it another somewhere, which to me, I don't believe. The foundation is Jesus Christ. But if you agree with me on this principle and this basis, then let children of wisdom Ask ourselves, 
If God have done this all free of charge, what shall we render? Maybe answer yourself personally. But let's see David's answer here. And let's see if we will buy into it or we'll even modify it. Let's just pick from the number one up to ten. He was talking of some of the things like I have already said or paraphrased about. But from number ten, he answered this question. So let's please, my dear, take us through the verses ten downward. Because if I want to read from up, it could be so much. That is why I love you to be reading on your own. Thank you. So let's pick, let's say from 10. It says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. It happened to me too. I said in my haste, all men are like, I am not saying it. What shall I render unto God for all his benefits towards me? Listen, the answer is here. I will take the cup of salvation. If you own the Bible, underline salvation. And let alone having a cup. That means salvation is contained by a cup. And call upon the name of the Lord. 14, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. 15, precious in the sight of Lord is the death of his saints. Listen to me. I will explain this to you. Do you know that here he was talking about his death? If you read the book of John chapter 13, when he lift the cup, and said, this is my blood. And when he took the blood and said, this is my body. Broken for you with tongues. That here, he was referring it. The Bible said, Jesus said, I will have me. Hey, it's not pastor. It's not you. Do you sometimes feel like that? He said, the bounds of death have entangled me. Jesus said it. He said, are you so low? And he lifted the cup. So David was talking about it. That is going to happen to my grandson. Because it did happen to me. The Bible has prophesied that there will be king in my state. So I know the experiences kings go through. That's why some, somewhere in Ghana, they were talking about the kingship. And then Mahama said, I won't mind these people. But when Kofu or Rorins talk, I will take it seriously. Because I know they're coming from where I am. You see, sometimes it's easier said than done. It's like you are watching the television, the soccer game. Ah! Asamwe time. Don't fukum fu. Why don't you score this? Okay. Your mouth can easily score it. Get to the field and let alone put on JC. Trust me, you will sink. Not even falling down. You will sink. So David was saying that, oh, if he says he is miserable, I understand him. I've been there before. After even I stood for Saul, listen here. And if I stood for Saul, Saul don't have anything to be grateful with, but only to think to kill me. Saul, if you knew how to throw javel, why didn't you go and throw the javel against Goliath when he was coming? And right in your palace, you are going to pitch me against the wall. Listen, there is no gratefulness in human beings. It is not me that is doing to you today. It used to be there. 
And we are only continuing it. But thank God we are changing the trend with the mercies and the grace of Jesus. Fourteen. He says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Oh Lord, truly I am the servant. I am the servant and the sons of thy handmaid. Thy has loosed my bounds. You understand servanthood? And that's what Jesus did. Jesus said, you people see me as a king. And they were afraid of him. When Jesus speaks, the people melts because they knew his miracles and so once upon the time he said he was feeling miserable then he gathered his disciples up and he says come 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 he took off their high heels took off his jacket put on a napkin half dressed started washing their feet do serious washing their feet read john 13 you will see then when he got to Peter, Peter said, no, 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 master, you are too big to wash my feet. He said, listen, if I don't wash your feet, you will backslide. He said, then pour water on my head. That is Bible. And you see it here. David, as a king, that time, he wasn't a king anywhere Trump comes. And yet, look at how big our Trump is. Very big. Because he leads supernation of the world. David used to pass then that. But here he was calling himself what? There you go. Servant. And his son Jesus did the same thing. King of all the world of universe. Who contains the Holy Spirit. Is washing feet. Hey. Asma Echokayayu. Serious. He was washing feet. And he said, I will offer thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the name. That's evangelism there. Of the Lord. Is it done? Thank you. 18. I will pay my vows unto you. You see, the vows, vows, vows is repeatedly. Here he's telling us, when God does something for us. We should appreciate it. Are you typing into my wisdom? Why is Sunday coming? I just want to gratify. If even I don't preach. I know God will permit me to preach. But if even I don't preach. Then I, I will call you one. Let me start from here. I will say, Maggie, come. Then when Maggie come and stand by me. Then I will say, when Maggie came. She was like this. She was like this. He say, whether I put you on fire or not, I know all of your works. I'm your pastor. You all have your files with me. And she has done this. And she has done this. And she has done this. Therefore, I reward you. I appreciate what you've done. Even together with all the mistakes you made in between. They were the sandwich in between the bread. Do you know what it takes? Every morning, you put the perch at your armpit and go and deposit money at the bank. It's a work there. It takes some hours. Do you know what it takes? Even just to take a phone call, to call someone and say, how are you doing? It's a service there. Jesus appreciated all the little ones. So coming back to the point... He says, 19, in the course of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. You know that all what I'm reading thereafter are the answer of what he was looking to reward God with. So David said, I don't, someone was saying that, God owns all the cattle and the sheep, yet he doesn't eat meat. 
Otherwise, I will give him all the meat and go to McDonald's, take all McDonald's shops and give to him that, Papa, if only what you want to eat, eat them all. But he doesn't eat them. He doesn't eat fast food and let alone organic food. So what does God want then? He said, we should appreciate him. When people do things, appreciate them. Listen to me, let me tell you. A nation that doesn't recognize the service of past is not worth to die for. Doesn't worth it. Don't die for it. If you come to this church, you do whatever you do, and we don't respect what you are doing, advise yourself. I'm telling you, it's Bible. And even before you advise yourself, I have a suggestion for you. Point your point out. Oh, pastor. There's no mistake about that. No, my besides, oh yeah, then pastor, I I swept here. Oh, I'm sorry. If you swept here, I will buy you a new broom. <laughs> so you can sweep better. That's sarcastically right. I have to give you a motivation where you can sweep better. And that's what David was talking about. You see, thank God for salvation. Salvation, we will get there. But listen to me. We're not coming to be churching and giving, you will die before you see that we love you. We got to show to you that we love you. It is for you. That is what we were talking of benefit. The original and the prophet. So on this earth, we will show you to you. Then when you die and you go to heaven, then you go and take the original. So the benefits you must enjoy. When Jesus sent the 70 to go and evangelize on his behalf. Am I right in the book of Luke chapter? I guess is it Luke chapter 10? I stand to be corrected. He said, go and in my name, preach. Don't take anything. Don't, if you have forgotten your wallet, don't worry. But any house you go, let them feed you. Because a workman is work for his work. So we, 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 David said, God, you've been nice to me. You've been there for me. And so with all what you have done, I will lift. I will lift up. Let's read uh, 10 again. I mean, excuse me, 13 again. Let's read 13 again. Let's all read it together. Please, thank you. I would take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Thank you. If God, you have done this for me, because if I'm to pay you alone, for the reward you did for me and assisting me to even kill Goliath, that alone will be so much that I can appreciate you to merit it. And lifting the cup of salvation there. Do you know that it talks about evangelism? Do you know it talks about how Jesus came to die and save us? Do you know it talks about we shouldn't be greedy. The Bible says that there were some lepers in Samaria. And they cast them out from the city to go and dwell the, behind the walls of the city. Then there was an issue of farming. And then they said to themselves, if we stay here, we will die. So why don't you go to our enemy's camp? Peraventure they will have mercy on us and get us something to eat. And if they killed us, let them kill us. It's better to sit here and starve to death. So the Bible says, when they went to the enemy's camp, they happened to conquer the enemies. They ran away by themselves. And the Bible says, they said to one another, it is not good, you see, for, all, for us to eat all this food. After all, how much can we eat? So the Bible says, they went back to the city, regardless of what they would do to them. And yet they were their very enemy. And inform them, you people thought you are in the war. All the time I tell you, people that make a war and within the walls are cowards. Read the whole Bible and you will see. God is not against war. 
But when the Bible says, let's protect ourselves, let's protect ourselves, let it be group, let it be this, let it be this. That is why from the time of Govachov, is this Gova? Yeah, walls are falling. And now you are building. So it is not about groups. It's not about camping. It's not about particular people. It's not about America, but it's not Mexico. It's not about this, this. Look, we don't think queer. We think in unionism. They say, no. Let's think about others. I'm still explaining the cup of salvation. That is why we got to be there for people. That is why we have to reach people. That is why sometimes you have to approach your brother. Brother, I think this route you are taking, excuse me, it won't help you. In wisdom, it's a cup of salvation. We have to do in our means to give people hand. I said to give people what? Yeah. It's good. It's good. I haven't got to pay your vows and the rest. And so you will say that me, me went to work by myself and I got my money. Do I share with anyone? Oh, praise the Lord. Take your money. You've forgotten that once upon a time you were weeping and you would say, oh God, if you help me and I pass these exams, oh, I will go and sing one song for you and now you pass the exam. You tell God, you yourself, that this business, Sundays we are not free. Kajoko actually said, you so soon forgotten that it was him that gave you the brains to study. You so soon forget that so soon this bank account that is doing good, it was him that sees the bouncing checks. And what about the strength? This morning, for instance, I wake up, I stretch my leg and I stretch. I lifted my arm and it lifted. I opened my mouth and song was coming. I said, yeah, God is good and his mercy is endured forever. What about when I stretch and it doesn't stretch? You could have seen the type of phone call Miss Mary will make to you. Hey, Obi you so for change. Oh, yes. I'm not bigger than that. It can happen to me. But it's by his grace. Whilst we sleep at the night, then he says, no, let the angels give him special fun so that the next morning he can wake up. And then when I wake up in the morning, then I come and display my stupidity. I am so strong. Me or myself. If I like, I will preach. If I like, I won't preach. Because see a man. Then don't preach. Don't preach and see if you will live. Don't preach and see if you will live. I have to have the common sense to know that if nothing at all, it doesn't care the circumstance going around me. God has sustained me. We got to render unto him. Render unto him a service. And for the sake of time, we might continue. But let's think about this. It has got to a time someone should not tell you what to do. Think about what the Lord has done and make some decisions for yourself. Know where you belong. After the Israelites has went through all the areas, then Joshua pointed to them. Today, tell me the God we left and the God we go into and the God we see, which one will you serve? He said, as for me and my house, we shall. Because he has been there for it. God bless you. Let's be on our feet. Let's be.